Hello, this is Miss Little John. So this is the uh, lecture video for Data Nugget called Is Chocolate for the Birds? Featuring a scientist, Sky Greenler from Colorado College. This is a real scientist and real data. So re let's read the background information. About 9,000 years ago, humans invented agriculture as a way to grow enough food for people to eat. Today, agriculture happens all over the globe and takes up 40% of Earth's land surface. To make space for our food, humans must clear large areas of land, creating a disturbance or a drastic change to the habitat. This disturbance removes the native plants already there, including trees, small flowering plants, and grasses. Many types of animals, including mammals, birds, and insects, need these native plants for food or shelter and will now find it difficult to live in the area. For example, a woodpecker bird cannot live somewhere that has no trees because they live and find their food in the trees. However, some agriculture might help some animals because they can use the crops being grown for the food and shelter they need to survive. One example is the cacao tree, which grows in the rainforests of South America. Humans use the seeds of this plant to make chocolate, so it is a very important crop. Cacao trees need very little light. They grow best in a unique habitat called the forest understory, which is composed of the shorter trees and bushes under the large trees found in rainforests. To get a lot of cacao seeds for chocolate, farmers need to have large rainforest trees above their cacao trees for shade. In many ways, cacao farms resemble a native rainforest. Many native plant species grow there, and there are still taller tree species. However, these farms are different in important ways from a native rainforest. And here's a picture of Skye out in the field counting birds along a, one of her four transects, and they explain transect in a minute. For example, there are many more short understory trees in the farm than there are in native rainforests. Also, there are fewer small flowering plants on the ground because humans that work on cacao farms trample them as they walk around the farm. Skye is a biologist who wanted to know whether rainforest birds use the forest when they are disturbed by adding cacao farms. Skye predicted she would see many fewer birds in the cacao farms compared to the rainforest. To measure bird abundance, she simply counted birds in each habitat. To do this, she chose one rainforest and one cacao farm and set up two transects in each. Transects are parallel lines along which the measurements are taken. She spent four days counting birds along each transect for a total of eight days in each habitat. She had to get up really early and count birds between six and nine in the morning because that's when they're most active. Scientific question number one. What is the effect of cacao farms on bird abundance? So you have some bird observation data there on the right. You've got um, the total bird count of 106 in the cacao farm and 116 in the rainforest area. It says, use the data from table one to answer scientific question number one. And so here's a picture of what the cacao farm looks like and what the undisturbed rainforest looks like. The image on the left shows a typical cacao farm with some smaller trees remaining to provide shade for the cacao. The image on the right shows an undisturbed rainforest. In the rainforest, all the taller trees and small flowering plants remain. So we're not writing anything up here. This is just the question that we'll start with. What is the effect of cacao farms on bird abundance? What data will you use to answer question one? So we need to think about our independent and dependent variable. And um, it's helpful to think of these in terms of a cause and uh, cause and effect relationship with the independent variable being the cause and the dependent variable 
being the effect. So this is the data that's been collected, the type of habitat, and the total bird count. So which of these, so we know these are our variables. So which of these would be the dependent variable, the effect, the thing that we're measuring? Hopefully you're saying that it's the total bird count and the independent variable, the cause, in this cause and effect relationship would be the type of habitat. So then you would go down here and let's get the text box tool. That might be kind of big, but let's try. Um, <clears throat> so we'll write that it will be habitat. whether it's a cacao farm or a rainforest. And then the dependent variable will be the total bird count. Make a claim that answers scientific question number one, what is the effect of cacao farms on bird abundance? So again, we need to look up here, what is the effect? So hopefully you're saying there isn't much effect. There's not a big effect. There's, there appears to be a, a little bit of an effect, but there doesn't appear to be a big effect here. So we can write that. Cow farms did not appear to have a big effect on bird abundance compared to the rainforest. Notice that I'm being very specific here. I'm comparing the two. I didn't just write not much effect. You know, we're, you are college students now. You're high school students, but you're doing college work. So, you know, we're going to take it to the next level and be specific. What evidence was used to write your claim? By the way, this is helping you with a scientific skill number five um, for this course, which is it has to do with um, investigations, labs, you know, being able to identify parts of an experiment, for example. Um, and uh, one of the free response questions on the AP exam is that you'll have to design an experiment and make a claim and justify data. So this is good practice for that. So whenever you're um, writing what evidence was used to write your claim, notice it says reference specific parts of the table or graph. So it needs to be very specific. The total abundance of birds was 106 in the cow farm and 116 in the rainforest. Or you don't have to write it exactly like that, but basically essentially like that. So notice I wrote specific numbers. I didn't write there were more birds on the cacao farm than the rainforest. I actually wrote numbers from the data because that is our evidence. Explain your reasoning and why the evidence supports your claim. Connect the data back to what you learned about how agriculture may act as a disturbance. So there were slightly fewer birds in the cacao farm, but the abundance between the two habitats was pretty similar. Um, this indicates that the cacao farms are probably not changing the overall amount, of, overall amount of habitat and food available to the birds. So I'm, you can pause this video and go ahead and type in your version of the Cami doc, something to that effect and restart it when you're ready. Moving on to the next part, Sky's next steps. 
Sky was shocked to see so many birds in cacao farms. She decided to take a closer look at her data. Sky wanted to know how the types of birds she saw in the cacao farms compared to the types of birds she saw in the rainforest. She predicted that cacao farms would have different types of birds than the undisturbed rainforest. She thought the bird types would differ because each habitat was different, has different types of food available for birds to eat and different types of plants for birds to live in. Sky broke her abundance data down to look more closely at four groupings of birds. Toucans, which eat large insects and fruit from large trees and live in holes in large trees. Hummingbirds, which eat nectar from flowers and live on tree branches and leaves. Wrens, which eat small insects and live on shru small shrubs on the forest floor. And flycatchers, which eat small insects and live on tree branches, tree branches and leaves. The scientific question number two, what is the effect of cacao farms on the abundance of different bird types? So we're not answering that here. We've got some stuff down here. That, that's the uh, question we'll, we'll get to. What is the hypothesis? Find the hypothesis in Sky's next steps above and underline it. A hypothesis is a proposed explanation for an observation, which can then be tested with experimentation. So let's go back up here and find her hypothesis. And it's right here. She thought the bird types would differ because each habitat has different types of food available for birds to eat and different types of plants for birds to live in. So let's um, try online. Underline that and that. There we go. Use the data from table two to answer scientific question number two. Remember it's up there. So we have the two different habitats and specifically the number of birds in each habitat. So two kins, you can see there was one in the cacao. So we'll put one. And in the rainforest, if you add these up, you'll see that there are 14. The hummingbirds and the cacao habitat. I'll just give it to you instead of making you add it up. It's 38. And in the rainforest, if you count these up, you'll see that it's 19. There were three wrens in the cacao forest and 52 wrens in the rainforest. There were 64 flycatchers in the cacao habitat and 31 in the rainforest habitat. What data will you graph to answer question two? So of course we graph our independent and dependent variables. Remember there are cause and effect relationship. So our independent variable is the habitat. And our dependent variable is the uh, number of the abundance of each of the different types of birds in the habitat. So for independent variable, I think I'm gonna change my color to black. Nah, how about green? The independent variable is the habitat, whether it's a cacao farm or rainforest. And the dependent variable is the um, total bird count for each type. So they refer to that as an abundance. It's pretty common for students to ask me what abundant means. Now you need to draw a graph. So here we have our scale already created. Um, notice it's uh, whenever students are making a graph, one common mistake is to make an uneven scale. 
So notice that each one of these sections has um, an equal value. Like you can't start with um, like two of these equals 10 and then all of a sudden five of them equals 10. It has to be, whatever your scale is, it has to be even. Um, we've got the bird type um, already here for you on the X axis. So this type of data is appropriate for a bar chart. And you can look up here and see that there was one toucan. Let's see, let's do the drawing you know, shapes, rectangle. So we need we need to uh, we're putting in data for um, didn't that work? Oh, there we go. For two different um, types of birds, and we're going to use different colors and hmm. how do I fill that? Nope, I want my color palette. I don't need it to be transparent. Well, okay. Whoops, did not want to do that. All right, well, ideally, I'd love it if I could figure out how to make that square be filled in, but that's okay. Um, and then there were 14 toucans in the rainforest. So I'll make that one green. And then we'll draw that in. Let's see, 10. Looks like that's 12. And let me try that again. So each of these has a value of two. There, that's the rainforest. So we got, got to be sure and make a key. So my rainforest is the green bar. And cacao is pink. Where did my pink go? Well, all right, let's make it blue. Oops. I don't appreciate them changing my color choices. All right, hummingbirds, um, it was 38 in the cacao and 19 in the rainforest. Where did my green go? Oops, I did this wrong. I should have, oh, no, I didn't. Struggles. All right, well, you know, that looks pretty good. All right, so pause the video and uh, create the graphs on for the, I mean, the, the bars on the, wrens and flycatchers. Now we're going to interpret the data, make a claim that answers scientific questions.
question two, what is the effect of cacao farms on the abundance of the different bird types? So what you'll write here is something um, to the effect of the, that even though the cacao and rainforest have similar numbers of birds, the types of birds that live in each habitat are different. So the cacao farm has benefited some bird types while harming others. And uh, when rainforests are replaced with the cacao farms, there's a shift in the composition of the bird community. So you might have to pause, rewind, uh, listen to me explain that again, and then write something to that effect in this spot right here. What evidence was used to write your claim? Reference specific parts of the table or graph. So um, as I mentioned before, you want to um, mention specific data as evidence. So um, depending on the bird type, the cacao farm either um, increased or decreased in abundance of that particular any type of bird. There are many more toucans and wrens in the rainforest. There are 14 toucans and 52 wrens. Then in the cacao farm, which only has one toucan and three wrens. There are more hummingbirds and flycatchers in cacao farms. There's 38 hummingbirds and 64 flycatchers. Then in the rainforest, where you only have 19 hummingbirds and 31 flycatchers. So pause the video if you need to and type in your evidence here. Explain your reasoning and why the evidence supports your claim. Connect the data back to what you learned about diet and living preferences of the different types of birds. So <clears throat> I'll give you guys a few seconds to think. And if you need to pause the video. This evidence supports the claim because it shows which bird species are more or less abundant in cacao farms compared to the rainforest. This is important for science because cacao farms are causing a disturbance and affecting the types of habitat and food available for the bird uh, for the birds. And, um, and this creates uh, a shift in the types of birds because it's a wolf favor some species while harming others. Toucans need big trees to make their nest in. They eat lots of big fruits. In the cacao farms, there are not many big trees and there's not enough fruit trees. So it makes sense that there are more toucans in the rainforest habitat. Wrens live on the floor of the rainforest in all the small plants and shrubs but the farm doesn't have these plants underneath the cacao trees because workers trample them and the wrens don't have anywhere to live. So it makes sense that there are more wrens in the rainforest habitat. The cacao farms have many honey, hummingbirds, possibly because they really like to eat the nectar of the flowers that live on the cacao trees and on the shade trees. And finally, the flycatchers might like the cacao more because there's more open space for them to fly around and catch bugs in the air, unlike in the rainforest. Did the data support Sky's hypothesis? Use evidence to explain why or why not. If you feel the data were inconclusive, explain why. So think that over before listening to my explanation of the answer. Pause the video if you need to. The data are consistent with the uh, hypothesis that the, the difference in food and hab habitat availability between the habitats is driving the difference in bird population numbers. Sky observed that some species of bird do better in cacao and some do better in the rainforest However, the data is inconclusive because she did not directly measure food or habitat availability. Um, 
in order to give a stronger support to her hypothesis, she would need to collect more data on this to be more confident. Your next steps as a scientist. Science is an ongoing process. What new question or questions should be investigated to build on Sky's research? What future data should be collected to answer your question? So, um, essentially, um, just think about uh, what kinds of habitats there are maybe even around here where you guys live. What kinds of habitats are they? Um, how disturbed are they by human activity? Um, for example, in my neighborhood, we have green belts that are forested and unmanaged, you know, there's they've just left it wild. And so that's going to have a different, possibly a different abundance of birds and, and different types of birds than say, uh, one of our parks in the neighborhood, which is uh, very disturbed or one of these agricultural fields around here. Um, And that's it. So you guys let me know if you have questions.